Good evening, I'm David Kramer with Alaska Weather. As always, please visit our website, weather.gov slash Alaska. Get any updates to our forecast or check out any watches, warnings, advisories that we might have out for your area. Also, call our weather info line at 1-800-472-0391. Get any updates to the forecast through that means as well. And you can email me at the address at the bottom of the screen, david.kramer at noaa.gov. Starting off, we want to talk about one of the outages that we do have planned for our uh, Pedro Dome radar. That's the one that's near Fairbanks and provides that radar imagery for the Fairbanks area. We do have this scheduled update to happen September 14th through September 24th. So the good news is we are going to get it back, but it will be down for 10 days so that we can do an upgrade to help expand the lifetime of this radar, specifically with the pedestal of the radar. So if you are one of the many people who uses that on a regular basis, please be advised that it will be down for service from the 14th of September through the 24th of September. Taking a look now at the advisories that we have out for the state. One is for the Yakutat area and the other is near Haines. Both of these are frost advisories and both are going to be in effect from 1 a.m. Saturday morning through 7 a.m. Saturday morning. And now the one for Haines is specifically for the Haines Highway from the Chilkat River Bridge to the border. Again, those are both frost advisories out in effect for tonight from 1 a.m. Saturday to 7 a.m. Saturday. We also have up north a winter storm warning that is in effect. This is for snow for the northeastern portions of the Brooks Range. This is already in effect and it will be in effect until 6 a.m. on Saturday. This is for one to three inches of total accumulation with some localized areas getting up to as much as six inches. Again, this is winter storm warning for the northeastern parts of the Brooks Range that is in effect now until 6 a.m. on Saturday. Taking a look also down in the southeast, we have some marine winds that are going to be uh, picking up for September or from today through September 12th. We are going to see some gusts in Lynn Canal up to 20 knots and down through Stephens Passage to Cape Spencer around 15 knots. Otherwise we're going to see less than 10 knots in areas further to the south. And while we're in the southeastern portion of the state we can see some of the beautiful weather that uh, the area has been seen for today Friday September 11th. Up through Juneau, seeing temperatures getting up to 64 degrees with beautiful clear skies and all around at Wrangell, Haines, Sitka, and Ketchikan, all places that we're gathering some of these FAA webcams to see some of the beautiful weather down in the Panhandle. For our satellite imagery, we'll start off with our system that's moving in from the west, pushing in a frontal system out to the western Aleutian Islands towards the central Aleutians. As we watch this again, you can see some of the leading edge of this bringing some cloud cover out towards the Pribilof Islands as well. However, out over mainland Alaska, we are seeing a lot of high pressure dominating the area. As we watch this loop one more time, we'll focus in on the northern locations where we'll see a system moving through, pushing a trough through the northeastern portion of the state, and that's what's our biggest snow producer for the northeastern portion of the Brooks Range. So as we look at our weather for the remainder of the day, we can stay up with that trough pushing through, bringing snow through the Brooks Range, a mix of rain and snow for the north slope, with some mix of fog as well in there for the Arctic coastline, and a mix of rain and fog out by the Point Hope area. We're also going to see some scattered showers throughout some of the interior, pushing down into the eastern interior as well. But that high pressure out over the west coast of the state and extending ridging out over southern mainland is allowing for much of the southern half of the state to stay pretty dry, and that's going to include the Panhandle area as well. We do have our system out by the western Aleutian Islands, bringing in a push of warmer air to the area, bringing rain to the western and central Aleutians. As we move into tonight, this system is going to push further to the east, pushing more of the heavier rain to the central Aleutians and bringing some rain to the Pribilof Islands as well. And then on the back side of this slope, pulling down some of the cold air, but still warm enough to see rain for the western Aleutians. Our high pressure is out over the west coast of the state, up by the Seward Peninsula area, extending ridging once again over much of the southern half of the state. As we look up further to the north, we are going to see some snow lasting in the Brooks Range through tonight, with some areas of fog up along the Arctic coast, and then a mix of rain and fog as we move closer towards the Kotzebue Sound area. Over the eastern portions of the interior up by the Yukon Flats area, rain that's going to be transitioning to snow as we get further to the east and at higher elevations. Down in the pan handles should be pretty dry for tonight. 
As we move into Saturday, still dry conditions for the Panhandle area and much of the southern portions of mainland Alaska. Over the eastern interior, we are going to see some rain. And then through the Brooks Range and Arctic coastline, we're going to see some snow at higher elevations with a mix of rain and snow at the more low-lying areas. Some fog for our Kotzebue Sound area and our high pressure continuing to sit over the west coast of the state, extending and ridging down all of the west coast. This is holding up our system out over the Bering Sea from progressing too far to the east. So we'll still see rain for the Pribilof Islands down through the central and western Aleutians, but not pr progressing very quickly towards the eastern Aleutians. However, as we move into Sunday, that high pressure is going to push further to the east out of more of the uh, central locations of mainland Alaska, extending down to areas just south of Kodiak Island. But this allows the frontal system out over the Bering to push further to the east, starting to bring rain to the west coast of the state and through the eastern Aleutians, as well as the Alaska Peninsula, with some lighter showers behind the front for the central and western Aleutians. Up along the Arctic coastline, we'll see a mixture of rain and fog, and then some lighter rain out over the eastern interior. South Central Alaska should stay pretty dry under the effects of the high pressure, and Southeast Alaska will also stay pretty dry. As you look at our temperatures, starting with our lows for Saturday morning, staying in the Panhandle area, temperatures dropping down to the lower to mid 40s. Down below freezing for some of the areas in South Central, however, most locations will stay just above the freezing mark. As we move into the interior, mid 30s are expected, and those mid 30s are going to push down into some of southwest until we get closer towards the coast where temperatures will drop closer to 40 degrees. That's going to be true up the west coast of the state. However, along the Arctic coastline, temperatures hovering right around freezing. Dropping down to the Alaska Peninsula into the 40s there for lows, and then into the upper 40s for much of the Aleutian Islands. Atka, or Adak rather, going to get down to 51 degrees. Saturday afternoon highs getting into the 50s for the Aleutian Islands and Alaska Peninsula. Southwest Alaska mid to upper 50s and then lower 50s throughout some of the Seward Peninsula and through the interior portions of the state. 40s around the Kotzebue Sound area and right around 40 degrees for western locations of the Arctic coast and mid 30s for the areas to the east. Upper 50s for those highs for South Central Alaska and into the lower 60s for the Panhandle area. So move into our Sunday morning low temperatures, dropping down to the lower 40s for much of the Panhandle area. However, some locations like Juneau and uh, Yakutat will drop into the 30s. Into the 30s for much of South Central area, Glen Allen going to get a little bit colder, 27 degrees expected low for the Copper River Basin. Lower 30s for much of the interior, uh, especially for Central and Eastern locations. However, as we move to the West, temperatures in the mid to upper 30s and then in 40s as we get along the West Coast of the state. Arctic coastline, however, mid-30s out west and right around freezing for areas to the east. Down in the Alaska Peninsula, dropping down into the upper 40s, and then in the mid-40s for much of the Aleutian Islands and Pribilof Islands. Sunday afternoon highs getting back up into the 50s for the Pribilofs and Aleutians, as well as the Alaska Peninsula, getting up right around 60 degrees for the Bristol Bay area, into the mid-50s for much of southwest of Alaska, and into the lower 50s for much of the interior, right around 50 for the Norton Sound area, Kotzebue side, going to see temperatures in the upper 40s, lower 40s along the Arctic coastline, right around 60s for south central Alaska, and lower to mid-60s for the Panhandle area. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For aviation, we'll start off with a look at our flying weather. Out over the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, we're seeing quite a bit of IFR and MVR, primarily associated with the front moving through, starting to push into the central Bering Sea, bringing those conditions to the central Aleutian Islands, eastern Aleutians, and some of the Alaska Peninsula as well. Much of the southern Maine then will be primarily VFR. However, there are some areas of MVFR, especially as we get into the Alaska Range and areas to the west in the YK Delta area. As we move up further north in the state for the Kotzebue Sound area, then up through the Brooks Range and Arctic coastline, a mixture of MVFR and IFR are expected. Down in the Panhandle, however, VFR conditions are expected to persist through Saturday morning. As we move into sun Saturday afternoon, still going to see VFR conditions for the Panhandle area all along the North Gulf Coast and much of the southern mainland. In the interior, fair amount of MVFR, especially as we get further off to the west, and then MVFR through the Brooks Range and Arctic coastline. Down in the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, still going to see a fair amount of IFR conditions with the system moving through the area with some spotty areas of VFR. 
on Sunday morning. Once again, primarily MVFR and IFR conditions for the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, but we're still going to see primarily VFR conditions for much of the southern mainland until we get into the Alaska Range where we'll see quite a bit of MVFR. That MVFR is going to extend up through the western portions of the interior through the Kotzebue Sound area, Brooks Range, and Arctic coastline with some areas of IFR for the western locations of the Arctic coast. Down in the Panhandle, going to see VFR conditions for Sunday morning. VFR conditions are going to persist Sunday afternoon for the Panhandle all along the North Gulf Coast and through the southern mainland until we get to the coastline of southwest Alaska where we'll see some MVFR conditions approaching. As we move up into the central and western interior, you're going to see some MVFR conditions there that will extend north through the Brooks Range and along the Arctic coastline. Then down in the Bering Sea, we are going to see some MVFR and IFR conditions throughout the area, including the Aleutian Islands. Taking a look at our passes, starting up north at Anaktuvik, IFR conditions expected to improve to MVFR in the afternoon. Adigan Pass also going to be IFR in the morning, then becoming MVFR in the afternoon. Lake Clark and Merrill should both be VFR throughout the day on Saturday. Raining will start off marginal and then improve to VFR in the afternoon. Windy should be marginal throughout the day Saturday, as well as at Isabel Pass. Mintasta Pass should be VFR for the day Saturday, as well as Tanita and Portage. And then as we look to Chilkoot and White, both expected to be VFR all day Saturday. For our freezing levels, we can see with the colder air that has been moving in, especially Friday morning, we do have some of that surface freezing line moving down into areas of the northeastern part of the state and some areas around eastern parts of south central encompassing the Copper River Basin. We have our surface freezing levels a little bit warmer out over the central Aleutians out ahead of the system moving in, pulling up some of that warmer air from the south, bringing 12,000 feet freezing levels to the central Aleutians. And then out over the Panhandle area, another area of some warmer air up to a size 10,000 feet for southern locations of the Panhandle. Looking at our icing in the eastern portions of the interior, some light icing above 7,000 feet. Then along the Arctic coastline, some light icing below 4,000 feet is expected. Some more light icing out by the western Aleutian Islands as that low out west uh, pulls in some of the colder air from the north. Going to be above 7,000 feet expected for that light icing by the western Aleutians. Looking at our jet stream, strongest portion of the jet out of a southwesterly direction up to as high as 140 knots, pushing in towards the central Aleutian Islands, dropping down to around 85 knots as it moves into the Bering Sea. Another jet streak out over the southwestern portion of the state out of a north to northwest direction, up to as high as 95 knots there, then out over the northern portion of the state, northerly winds 50 knots, and then by the Panhandle area, westerly winds 65 knots, increasing to 85 as we push off to the east. At 9,000 feet, uh, not much wind throughout the mainland Alaska, some northerly winds up to as high as 35 knots for the interior, and that's going to extend up through the central portions of the Arctic coast as well. And then some winds around 20 knots for the southern locations of the Panhandle. Strongest winds are going to be around our western Bering Low, up to as high as 60 knots out of a southwesterly direction near the central Aleutians, 55 knots by the western Aleutians, and then easterly direction to the north of the low, 65 knots. At 3,000 feet, still going to see the strongest winds around our low pressure system, strongest on the northern side up to as high as 80 knots out of an easterly direction. But as we get by the western Aleutians, westerly winds 60 knots there, 45 knots out of the westerly direction by the central Aleutians. Relatively light winds out over mainland Alaska, still primarily a northerly direction, but most uh, winds are going to be sub 20 knots. Kotzebue Sound area we'll see right around 20 knots, and northern locations of the Panhandle also going to be around 20 knots. For our turbulence areas are out by the central and western Aleutian Islands. Below 3,000 feet is expected. That's going to progress further to the east throughout the day as the front passes. Dual polarization technology is a major upgrade to the current radar system. It allows forecasters a better idea of what's actually out there and can help keep you safe. Current radar technology uh, transmits and receives information in the horizontal direction, which is very limited. Dual polarization technology, in addition to the horizontal, transmits and receives uh, vertical energy, which allows forecasters to get information about the size, shape, and phase of the precipitation. We can use that information to better determine the precipitation type to expect at your given location. There you have it. This new technology is currently being installed in radars across the country and is already being used by National Weather Service forecasters to produce better, more accurate forecasts. Learn more here and follow us.
Want to know about the future of weather radar? Well, the National Severe Storms Lab has it here with its new phased array radar. Let's check it out. It's a non-moving radar. It has four faces of the antenna, each pointing in different directions. One of the big advantages is that we're seeing so far, it can sample the, the area around the radar in less than a minute, maybe even a half a minute. And this is five, six times faster than what they can do today. NSSL is leading the development of future weather radar with this project. Learn more here and follow us. The Storm Prediction Center is one of the NOAA weather partners. They are located in the National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma. Greg Carbon gives us a glimpse into what the SPC does. Our mission is to analyze and forecast severe thunderstorms and the potential for tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds from those thunderstorms across the lower 48 states, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. One of the primary missions of the Storm Prediction Center is the issuance of severe thunderstorm and tornado watches across the country when conditions appear to be coming together to support the development of severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. The world-class meteorologists in the Storm Prediction Center specialize in severe weather and keeping you safe. Learn more here and follow us. The National Severe Storms Lab is working on increasing the lead time for severe weather warnings. The national average for tornado warnings is currently 13 minutes, but more notice would be helpful, especially for those in charge of moving large groups to shelter. Warn on Forecast will help forecasters issue hazardous weather warnings earlier. The project will give them more info about the chances of strong winds, large hail, and even tornadoes. Currently, warnings are created by forecasters looking at the atmosphere outside, understanding its volatility, and then comparing that to how they see the Doppler radar presenting what's going on inside thunderstorms. One on forecast is an idea where we're going to take the massive amounts of satellite, radar, and surface data and stick them all into a very high resolution prediction model. And then by producing new forecasts every 15 or 20 minutes, the forecasters hopefully will be able to use that model to produce warnings that extend out to an hour. Before the National Weather Service can use this tool, it must be developed and tested. One big challenge will be deciding how to get the model predictions to the forecasters. I'm going to keep this one very low, I'm just adjusting the track. These hazardous weather prediction models are going to produce a huge amount of output. And this fire hose of data is just too much for forecasters to handle in real time quickly. So in order to help deal with that, NSSL has developed a related project called FACETS. And FACETS is the methodology which will enable forecasters to focus very quickly on the most important threats. Once worn on forecasts and FACETS are proven to be reliable and effective, then forecasters will be better able to inform you of threats nearby. Learn more here and follow us. The hazardous weather test bed is located at the National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma. It is used for experiments that will allow forecasters to learn and apply new technologies. The hazardous weather test bed is a really unique space throughout all of NOAA. And this is where the researchers and the operational folks come together in a common space to solve operational problems and to test new research tools that the research community is working on. The goal is to accelerate the transfer from research to operations of the newest tools and techniques. People come from around the world to collaborate on this unique project. We can bring together not only NOAA people, but also university people, faculty, 
uh, researchers, uh, private sector meteorologists, folks working in other countries in meteorology, forecasters can all come together and focus on what the problem of the day is with the forecasters. Each spring, several experiments occur in the hazardous weather test bed. Learn more here and follow us. What are you looking at? And what are you ignoring? Did you notice the NOAA logo in the corner? Forecasters have a lot of information in front of them too. Every second counts during severe weather and decisions about where to focus are constantly being made. This could be even more challenging in the future. Phased array radar will produce four to six times more information than what we have now, which brings us to the question researchers are hoping to answer. Will more radar information affect forecasters' decisions? From our past experiments, we've learned a lot about how forecasters think uh, during the warning decision process, but we've also learned that those thought processes are very complex, and for that reason, we need a better way to be able to track forecasters' cognitive activity. Inbounds and possibly golf ball size tails. And eye tracker is a piece of technology that is used to determine in real time where someone's eye gaze is located. And these eye trackers are typically video based, which means a camera sits below a computer monitor and with infrared light and vector analysis, we can determine where a person is looking and how their eyes are moving. Eye tracking is already being used in the medical field and air traffic control. Using similar research methods, NSSL is discovering the benefit for weather forecasting too. Phased array radar will give forecasters a lot more to think about. Understanding their decision-making process will help researchers develop even more user-friendly tools. So what's the benefit for you? Even better weather warnings. To learn more, check us out online and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back for the marine section. We'll take a quick look at our ice edge. Not much, much has changed over the last several days. The navigational waters are still ice free. And we're looking at sea ice minimum to occur probably sometime in the next three to four weeks. Um, otherwise, we do have some new information from the National Snow and Ice Data Center from the University of Colorado Boulder. And that is showing our sea ice extent down uh, well below some of the normals, one of the lowest that we've had since 2012. However, we don't expect this to overtake the 2012 marks, but once again, it is pretty low for this time of year, uh, well below a lot of the averages that we see. Now, this does include all of the Arctic Ocean and not just areas that are near Alaska. Going down into the Panhandle area for Saturday's marine forecast, we do have a northerly winds in the inside waters, 10 to 20 knots, weakest in the south, getting higher as we get closer towards the Link Canal area. Out over the Gulf, northerly winds, 15 knots expected, with seas up to as high as 4 feet. On Sunday in the inside waters, northerly winds continuing, 15 to 25 knots, once again strongest as we get further to the north. And then out over the Gulf, northerly winds, 15 knots expected in most places, a little bit weaker as we get to the northern Gulf waters, only 10 knots up there. Over South Central Alaska, pretty weak winds all the way around, somewhat of a northerly direction and only around 10 knots for most locations, a little bit stronger east of the Barren Islands, around 15 knots there. Then on Sunday, not much change, still pretty weak winds, primarily a northerly direction, most locations around 10 knots, however around the Barren Islands, uh, out of a westerly direction and a little bit stronger to the east of the Barrens, around 15 knots there. Saturday for the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island area. Around the island, we do have winds in Shelikov Strait, northeasterly winds 10 knots. Then on the east side of the island, northwesterly winds 15 knots there. Otherwise, on the Pacific side, we have easterly winds 15 to 20 knots. And then on the Bering side, easterly winds 15 or 10 to 15 knots expected. On Sunday, more southerly winds are expected around. On the Pacific side, 10 to 20 knots, strongest to the west. Then a little bit of a southeasterly direction, 15 to 20 knots on the Bering side. And through Shelikov Strait, also southeast winds 10 knots are expected. On Saturday for the Aleutian Islands, a lot stronger winds out here with the frontal system moving through the area. Southerly winds in most locations, 
uh, 30 to 35 knots out over the central Aleutians, dropping down to 10 to 20 knots by the eastern Aleutians. And then out by the western Aleutians, strongest in the area, southwest winds 40 knots with seas up to as high as 14 feet. For Sunday, calming down a little bit, still remaining primarily out of a southerly direction. Out over the central and eastern Aleutians, southerly winds 20 to 25 knots expected. And then up to as high as 30 knots as we get out by the western Aleutians, seas highest again out there, 13 feet are expected. For the west coast on Saturday, a east to southeast wind is expected in all locations. Uh, 15 to 25 knots as we look along much of the west coast, stronger as we get out by the Pribilof Island, St. Matthew Island, and St. Lawrence Island, and then weaker winds in Norton Sound, only around 5 knots there. On Sunday, uh, winds picking up in some of these locations, especially Norton Sound, up to 15 knots out of a southeasterly direction. Otherwise, we're going to see south to southeast winds, uh, 25 to 30 knots, with the exception of the Pribilof Islands, a little bit weaker there, only 20 knots. Seas also higher on Sunday, where by St. Matthew Island we'll see 13 feet, and by St. Lawrence Island, 11 feet. Up along the Arctic coastline for Saturday, westerly winds 10 knots, getting up to a size 15 knots by Ukiagvik, and then down the west coast, variable winds 5 to 10 knots expected, and through the strait, easterly winds 25 knots. On Sunday, along the Arctic coastline, westerly winds 20 knots expected, weaker by the Kotzebue Sound area, only around 10 knots there, and then southeasterly winds 25 knots through the strait. Seas up to as high as 11 feet, highest south of the Bering Strait area. Quick recap of our weather, we have our system moving in from the west, pushing its front towards the central Aleutian Islands, bringing rain to the Pribilof Islands tonight, as well as the central and western Aleutians. But high pressure dominating the west coast of the state is starting to stall this front as that ridging pushes down the west coast through the Alaska Peninsula and out through some of the southern mainland. Drier conditions for the southern half of the state, including the Panhandle area, but as we get up into the Bering, uh, the Brooks Range, we are going to see some snow in the mountains where we do have the winter storm warning out until 6 a.m. on Saturday for the northeastern portions of the Brooks Range. Could see snow amounts 1 to 3 inches in most locations, some localized areas up to 6 inches. Then as we look down into the Panhandle area, we do have a frost advisory out for the Yakutat area and another frost advisory for the Haines area. However, the Haines one is only for the Haines Highway from Chilkat River Bridge to the border. And those are both in effect from 1 a.m. until 7 a.m. on Saturday. For Saturday, we do have the frontal system in the Bering bringing rain throughout much of the Bering Sea down to the central and western Aleutian Islands, but high pressure still dominating much of the state. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank <laughs> you.